Welcome to the second lecture of our journey into the world of the Japanese abacus, the Soroban. The content of this lecture is purely theoretical, you can skip it if you don't feel comfortable with theories. But I highly recommend that you listen to some parts of it in order to have a solid understanding of the topic. If you prefer reading instead of listening, this content is also available in our Soromania book series, available on Amazon. Check the link in the description below. If you are not subscribed yet, feel free to check out the channel and hit the subscribe button. You can also join our social media pages, like and share. Today, we embark on a fascinating exploration to uncover the essence of this ancient calculating tool that has transcended time and cultures. In this session, we delve into the essence of Soroban, from its definition to the historical milestones that shaped its development. We'll traverse through pivotal moments in time, tracing the footprints of notable scientists and thinkers who, captivated by its simplicity yet remarkable efficiency, have revered and contributed to the legacy of this iconic calculating tool. We will also talk about the human brain and the way Soroban affects the right brain, and finally we will see the benefits and the abilities cultivated by Soroban. The definition of Soroban, according to Wikipedia, is, the Soroban, counting tray, is an abacus developed in Japan. It is derived from the ancient Chinese suanpan, imported to Japan in the 14th century. Like the suanpan, the Soroban is still used today, despite the proliferation of practical and affordable pocket electronic calculators. Across the historical ages, Soroban has been used in several ways. The dust abacus. The original utilization of an abacus related calculation system is presumed to have been in the form of a board covered with dust or fine sand. The sand was divided into lines, each one representing a different numerical position. Numbers and quantities were calculated by means of various signs drawn along the lines. The early civilization of Mesopotamia may have seen the development of such a rudimentary calculator. The line abacus. With time, the dust abacus developed into a ruled board on which pebbles or counters were placed on lines somewhat like checkers on a backgammon board. Its wide use in Egypt, Rome, Greece, India, and other ancient civilizations is well attested. Herodotus, 484-425 BC, most likely refers to a line abacus in his record, the Egyptians moved their hand from right to left in calculations, while the Greeks from left to right. A famous example of the line abacus is the Salamis abacus preserved at the Athens Museum. It consists of a white marble board, 149 by 75 centimeters, with lines drawn on it. The grooved abacus. In addition to the line abacus, the Romans made use of a more advanced design. Several grooves were carved into the board along which counters were moved up and down. One counter was laid in each of the upper grooves, while four in each of the lower grooves. Some additional counters were laid on the right to facilitate the calculation of fractions. The Ancient Chinese Abacus The early Chinese abacus was very similar to the ancient Roman grooved abacus. The picture below represents the ancient Chinese abacus imagined from a description given in a book titled Mathematical Treatises by Ancients written by Suyo towards the end of the later Han Dynasty, about 1,700 years ago, and annotated by Chen Luan some 300 years later. This abacus is closely similar to the Roman grooved abacus both in construction and in the method of calculation. It may well be assumed that the Roman grooved abacus was introduced to China in earlier days. The Chinese abacus. In China, the abacus came into common use during the Ming dynasty. A book titled Cho Ching Lu gives this proverbial expression, a servant, sometime after he is hired, comes to do nothing more than he is ordered to. Therefore, he is like an abacus counter. A book written by Wu Ching H. S. Enmen in 1450 gives descriptions of the abacus. A large number of books published towards the end of the Ming dynasty attest to the fact that the abacus had come into popular use. The abacus then had two counters above the bar and five below. This type of abacus is still being used in China these days. The Soroban, Japanese abacus. A little past the middle of the 15th century, the Chinese abacus and its operational technique were introduced to Japan. Shortly afterward, Japan entered a long period of peace, which fostered the development of her cities and commerce. Mathematicians' constant and diligent study developed a distinct Japanese method of the Soroban operation different from the original Chinese method. 
the large-sized Chinese abacus was improved into a handier smaller-sized one. Towards the end of the 19th century, the Soroban with one 5-unit counter and four 1-unit counters on each rod came into use along with the older type which had one 5-unit counter and five 1-unit counters on each rod. In 1938, the technique of the Soroban operation was included in the National Grade School textbooks on arithmetic compiled by the Education Ministry. Today, the Soroban technique is a required study in the third and upper grades. The Soroban with one 5-unit counter and four 1-unit counters on each rod is the standard nowadays. It should also be noted that the older Chinese division method, which makes use of the cumbersome division table, was formerly replaced by the Japanese division method, which makes use of the multiplication table. The inclusion of the Soroban technique in the curriculum of Japanese compulsory education and the enforcement of the Soroban efficiency test system since its inception in 1928 have been the two major factors which have led to the present popularity of Soroban in Japan. In Japan, academic researchers made a lot of articles about the Soroban and its importance in the educational system. Ms. Shizuko Amewa Professor in Shinshu University, College of Education. Published an article in January 20, 2001, titled, The Ripple Effects and the Future Prospects of Abacus Learning. The introduction of the article says, I have been engaged in research concerning the abacus for many years from the perspective of a psychologist. My research findings show that abacus study not only improves the ability to calculate both on the abacus and mentally, but also provides a beneficial ripple effect on other disciplines. This paper will explain what ancillary disciplines are influenced and the reasons for it. I will also discuss the characteristics of and future prospects for abacus learning. You can find the whole article in the description below. Dr. Toshio Hayashi, Doctor of Engineering. Professor in Osaka Prefecture University. Director of the Research Institute for Advanced Science and Technology. Presented a lecture in Niko Kanugawa, Tachijai, Tachijai Prefecture on July 30, 2000. You will find a link in the description to the summary of this lecture, where Dr. Toshio Hayashi explains what abacus education ought to be for the development of the right brain. Ms. Kimiko Kawano. Researcher in Nippon Medical School, Center for Informatics and Sciences. Published on July 14, 2000, an article titled, Image Thinking of Abacus Users in Higher Dan by a Study on Brainwaves. She introduced the article by, We have been studying brainwaves, EEG, electroencephalography, during various kinds of brain activities for more than 10 years. In the beginning of the study, subjects were mainly students. We made them listen to music or calculate mathematical problems and then measured their EEGs to investigate the brain activity. After statistically analyzing the data obtained from over 200 students, we have found the tendency that B waves, which indicate the active area of the brain, appeared on the right hemisphere while listening to music and on the left while calculating. This confirmed the hypothesis that the right brain is used to recognize images, figures and music in the left brain, the linguistic brain, to deal with logical thoughts, such as a calculation. At that time, we were asked from one TV program to measure the brain waves of an abacus champion. I thought, however, it would be difficult to prove some differences in the EEGs which involved quite large individual variances. The human brain is divided into two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, which are connected by nerve fibers called the corpus callosum. While each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body and performs different functions, they work together to process information and perform complex tasks. The left hemisphere of the brain is commonly linked with analytical thinking, logical reasoning, and language processing, all of which are vital for acquiring knowledge and executing mathematical activities. The Soroban actively involves the left hemisphere in various ways. Sequential and logical thinking. Symbolic representation. Development of mental math abilities. Strengthening connections between brain regions. The Soroban method also captures the involvement of the right hemisphere of the brain. While the left hemisphere is commonly tied to analytical thinking and language processing, the right hemisphere is typically associated with spatial awareness, creativity, and intuition. The Soroban method effectively nurtures the right hemisphere through various avenues of training. Spatial awareness. Visualization. Pattern recognition. Integration of both hemispheres.
Although the present curriculum for Japanese students does not seem to indicate so, the society in general still values Soroban skills. This is shown by the thousands of students who learn the Soroban at Juku classes. A high value is placed on the benefits of Soroban, which are listed below. Fosters a greater sense of numbers. Helps develop an intuitive understanding of numbers through their concrete representation on the Soroban. Fosters one's trust in the process of calculation by enabling one to observe it in action. Manifests the concept of decimal places and the progression of units by tens physically. Instantly accomplishes addition and subtraction when numbers are placed on the abacus. Improves understanding of compounded numbers through the use of supplementary numbers for 5 and 10. Helps in developing the beneficial qualities of concentration, patience, and endurance. Fosters one's confidence in calculation. Uses a left to right calculation method, which makes quick estimation and rounding off possible. Works on the decimal rather than fractional system, an easy progression to digital systems. Develops mental calculation, which is the ultimate resource. Develops the right brain tremendously. Leads to greater mental capacity. Expresses large numbers simply and easily. Provides a sense of achievement as one's proficiency improves. The Soroban helps students develop six major abilities. Ability to concentrate, concentration. For the Soroban official examination, you have to provide a certain number of correct answers within the time limit of 10 minutes. For example, in the first grade examination for multiplication, you have to move your fingers more than a hundred times to operate the Soroban for multiplying a six-digit number by a five-digit number. During the calculation, the multiplication table is mentally recited 30 times. Then, an answer of 11 digits is provided. Not a single mistake can be allowed in this process. When a question such as this is repeated 20 times, the examination is completed. Fingers move more than 2,000 times only for the multiplication test. We believe you now understand that Soroban education develops concentration through the training of finger movements. Ability to visualize and to be inspired, inspiration. Ms. Kimiko Kawano at Nippon Medical School has demonstrated in her research that Soroban users in Haidan, ranks, use their right brain in the Soroban method of mental calculation. Inspiration, such as problem solving and invention, is said to come from the right brain. The brain power that enhances the shortest route for the thought process needed for problem solving is also developed there. In addition, Professor Toshio Hayashi at Osaka Prefecture University emphasizes that the training of finger movements encourages synapses to be entwined with each other and constructs neuron networks. Inspiration creates new concepts and is one of the brain powers that is required in many fields. Ability to memorize, memorization. Mental calculation can be classified into two groups. One is the Soroban method that uses the right brain. The other is the mathematical method that uses the left brain. In the Soroban method of mental calculation, the right brain memorizes the patterns of answers processed. In this method, answers are stored in the long-term memory as intuitive images. The memorization method, which uses the left brain, that is commonly utilized for examinations only uses the short-term memory. There seems to be no wonder that 80% of the students at the University of Tokyo and Kyoto University have learned the Soroban. This type of brain power is acquired through mental calculation training. People who start this training while still young are more likely to acquire this brain power effectively. Ability to observe attentively, insight. The ability to observe attentively is greatly improved through Soroban training. You can learn to observe numbers attentively by training to carefully monitor them. No mistakes are excused in this process. You are considered successful when you are able to discover the workings of numbers. This practice leads to the ability to analyze various aspects with the use of numbers. Ability to process information, information processing. A tremendous amount of information is available nowadays. The ability to rapidly process necessary information is one of the most important abilities in the 21st century. Training for information processing with numbers is realized through the Soroban method of mental calculation, Anzan. Numbers are read rapidly without any mistake and are processed in the right brain. The information is then converted to accurate numerical data. Ability to listen and read quickly, speed reading and listening. 
There is a training component called mental calculation of figures read out aloud, Yomiya Jansen. In this training, a problem is read out aloud while the student promptly comprehends and mentally processes it. It may seem like an outdated way of learning, but it actually trains the brain power of listening intently, or speed listening. Again, you can check out our educational book for more explanations. And also our community in the social media. Hit the subscribe button, like and share. I hope you enjoyed this content. In the next lecture, we will dive deeper in the Soroban, starting from its layout, the utilization of the fingers, and the memorization process of the images in the brain. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next lecture.